Now, as the government is pushed to impose further measures to stop the spread of coronavirus, a verdict on the legality of previous lockdown rules is crucial. According to the lawyers representing Simon Dolan, the comments come amidst the entrepreneur's judicial review into the UK's lockdown rules being among the most onerous restrictions to personal liberty in almost four centuries. His lawyers have told the Court of Appeal that the regulations intended to slow down the spread of the virus actually imposed far-reaching restrictions on the lives and businesses of the entire population. They say the restrictions were unlawful and a disproportionate breach of human rights laws. Let's speak now with the entrepreneur Simon Dolan. Nice to have you back on with us, Simon. Just remind us then, um, so the first, you lost at first and this is the appeal, is that right? Yeah, exactly that. So the first judge just thought that there was there was no merit in it. Um, and so we appealed against that. And, uh, and here we are actually today and yesterday. Um, at the Court of Appeal. So um, we've got the Lord Chief Justice is the highest judge in the land uh, and two other judges who are going to be ruling on this. So, uh, you know, for the first time, I think I feel as though we're actually getting a, a fair hearing um, and we've got three eminent judges and, and the, like I say, the highest judge in the land is actually going to be ruling on this. So, uh, mm. yeah, that, that's where we're at at the moment. Uh I mean, I don't want to be pessimistic, Simon. I have no idea of how the legal system works here. But wouldn't it be just as an outsider looking in? It would be extraordinary, wouldn't it, if they ruled in your favour on this? Um, it would be a it would be a big decision. Yeah, that's for sure. But there's not. It doesn't need to be a binary decision either. So they could be, for example, they could rule it's it's legal in some ways and illegal in other ways, which mm. might affect different uh, different uh, factors of of the various lockdowns. And you have to bear in mind that. The government have changed the goalposts and the rules so many times since I started this way back in April um, that there's a myriad of different possibilities. But really what I'm concerned about and what I'm hoping to uh, achieve is to make sure that the government can never use this to do what they've done again. So they've used the Public Health Act to lock us down or to lock us up, you know, whichever way you want to do, to destroy the businesses, to sentence people to death, you know, all the things that we know about, all the collateral damage uh, to health and the economy. And what we're saying is that you can't do this. You know, what you've done is absolutely, it's unprecedented. You know, it's never my four centuries. Mm. It's evidence, uh, you know. In yeah, ne ne stuff. never happened before. But of course, the government argument, as you're all too familiar, Simon, is that, well, you know, do you not know what's going on out there? It's a pandemic. It's killing people. We have uh, a growing number of people in hospital, uh, depending on which figures you read, 60,000 dead. I mean, this is the government's response, of course. And at the moment, we seem to be in a kind of a second peak, and that's sort of getting worse. So the only way to make sure we have capacity in the NHS is to make certain difficult decisions like closing and restricting businesses and footfall and the like. Yeah, and that is their defence. Their defence is, is that everything that they've done is proportionate, and it's to stop this pandemic as they're calling it. Mean, it's not been a pandemic for a long time, not since since March. Um, and what we're saying is, is that it's entirely disproportionate because actually this doesn't affect that many people. It isn't fatal for very many people. And when you, they, they've recategorized deaths to make it look like COVID has been responsible for more than it actually has. But the bare facts that no one can argue with, forget about everything else, is, is that the deaths this year are no different from all causes and no different to the average over the last 10 years, literally no, no different mm. at all. Um, and so we're having a perfectly normal year. We just have a different strain of respiratory illness knocking about, which is killing some people for sure. Tragically, it has killed about 250 people that were otherwise healthy. Other than that, the rest of the people that have died have yeah. actually been elderly. But also and with but inf influenza sometimes kills uh, people that were previously healthy as well so that which would feed into your defense i guess absolutely and and we have a flu vaccine which has been around for 70 years and yet still tens of thousands of people a year in the uk die of flu and we've never shut the economy down before we've never shut the economy down for flu which is actually more deadly than the uh, than the covid virus flu this year apparently though has been has been cured you know from the figures normally it's tens of thousands and this year only 394 people have died of flu you're suspicious That's of that, I'm assuming. of course it's nonsensical you know every year it's the same amount and this year it's only 394 but, but would that, that would involve that involves doctors telling lies then 
No, it doesn't, because all they're saying is, is when they produce the statistics for COVID deaths, they don't say the, the deaths were caused by COVID. What they say was is that death is a factor in, or you have been tested for COVID previously in the 28 days um, before you've died. And literally, if you got hit by a bus and went into hospital and sadly died two or three days later, if you'd have had a COVID test a fortnight before you got hit by the bus, you would be listed as a COVID death. And no one will argue with that. That is fact. So the numbers are wrong. And we're, we're for whatever reason, they're, they're introducing these, these, well, they're not introducing, they have been doing these lockdowns for months now, uh, ruining people's lives, crashing the economy. Thousands of people are going to die because of cancer, heart attacks. We have domestic violence. We have suicide, misery, Christmas cancer, you know, all of these things. Um, for what? literally for nothing they're not saving anything they're not curing anything just it's briefly tragic. just briefly simon when, when does the when do you get a decision on this well down to the down to the judges of course it's a complex decision we're really hoping that we'll get a, a decision i'd imagine it's probably going to be mid next week okay we will watch with interest and uh, we will speak again simon thank you simon dolan the businessman who took the government to court lost the case now on appeal can he convince the highest judge in the land as i think he said uh, the merits of his argument over lockdown he's certainly got a lot of support out there whatever the rights and wrongs of some of the elements of what simon argues there is a widespread i'd suggest growing support for the, at least the principle of what he's trying to suggest. 0344 499 1000. 